Now, something that I've mentioned in some of the other videos for this series is that when I first had ME chronic fatigue myself, if somebody mentioned the role of psychology, it was something that I actually found personally really hurtful because I felt like it presupposed the, the incredibly debilitating and difficult and frustrating symptoms I was experiencing were psychological. And if they were psychological, that meant they weren't real physical symptoms. And what that meant was that my suffering wasn't real and that in some way I was making up my experience or I was doing it to get attention or something like that. And that was obviously very distressing when I was suffering from something that was so debilitating in my life and was so real in its experience. So before we come into exploring the role of, em of emotions in ME chronic fatigue, I just think it's really important that we're all on the same page, that what we're not saying is that ME chronic fatigue fibromyalgia is a psychological illness or a psychosomatic illness. What we're saying is that like a lot of chronic illnesses, there is a significant way that what's happening with our mind and emotions can impact on the physical experience that we're having. And it's interesting because when I first started getting into psychology, I remember reading books where they had strap lines of, you know, how to work with your mind and your emotions. And I used to think, well, mind and emotions, they're the same thing. I was so used to experiencing the world from the neck up. I was so used to just thinking psychology was thoughts because I had so many thoughts were happening inside of my mind that emotions were, not only were they a mystery, but they were just genuinely not part of my experience. Like, if you, it's not really an emotion, but the only real emotion I experienced was anxiety. But that was really a kind of mental kind of busyness and kind of going round and round and round and, and kind of worrying in my mind. And actually it took quite a period of time to learn to really feel my emotions and actually to recognize that in some ways, it wasn't the only fact that was going on, but in some ways the anxiety and the busyness in my mind was a way of avoiding and disconnecting from the actual feelings and emotions that were happening. Now, it's a slightly um, strange concept to get our mind around initially, but actually what's happening in our emotional experience, like if we're feeling angry, or we're feeling frustrated, or we're feeling hurt, or we're feeling invalidated, or in se unseen, or unloved, that that can actually have a real impact on our physical state. But if you think about it, if you're having emotions and you're not feeling them, to not feel something, you have to either tighten your system, or you have to use energy to push down, and to reject, and to, push, and to, to avoid feeling those feelings. And if you're in a state of anxiety to avoid it, that's burning energy through anxiety. It's like if you've got a tank of petrol, it's like just pouring petrol um, away if that's the fuel for your body. Or to, to kind of lock it away or hold it down, that also requires energy. And so by learning to free up our emotions, we're also learning to free up a lot of energy which that gets caught in the process of resisting or oppressing the feelings that are there. Mm -hmm.